it's Lisa. I have a page today with three um, Polaroid photos that I want to do. I actually had four photos. This was my, not my first car, it was my car I got after I graduated from college. And uh, so it had been my dream car and that's going to be the title uh, for the page. You may have noticed when the video started I've shown you the complete page this time. I did that because I, there was a discussion on one of the discussion boards about what people liked in videos and what they didn't like. And one of the things a lot of people liked was to see the completed page at the start of the video. So I thought I would try that and you can give me your feedback if you have a preference one way or another whether you like to see the completed project before you see all the steps or whether you'd wait rather wait and see that at the end. I, did, I always thought it kind of ruined the suspense. <laughs> so um, I didn't put the completed project, I just put little pictures, you know, a few little shots of, of what uh, the completed project, little parts of it before. So anyway, I'm just curious what you think about that. Now I have the, uh, let's see, I have some of the recorded collection from Webster's Pages. I also have this paper is out of, I'd have to turn it over to see. <laughs> Let's see here. It is Sprinkled with Love. This was a Valentine's collection from Webster's Pages, and that's what I want to use on my background. Here's my sketch. I have these photos scanned, so I'm going to use the originals. Um, even though, you know, they, they have deteriorated a little bit over time, they could deteriorate further. I like the look of this, and they've lasted for 30 years almost already, so I, I think they'll probably make it as far as I need them to, uh, but again, I do have them scanned, so um, I'm not going to lose them if something happens to them. I understand it's very important with the Polaroid, though, not to do anything to damage the, the, the whole combined thing, not cut it up or do anything that would tear the backing, because then it will uh, deteriorate, you know, sort of fall apart and... I don't know what happens, but it just it doesn't hold up from there. So I'm going to be very careful when I put adhesive on the back. Now one thing I wanted to point out about this particular photo in, is there's a, what looks, like, looks sort of like a house, it's actually a mobile home, in the background. This is important to me because I've been doing a lot of things where I'm talking about not having photos for a particular occasion. In this case, I did have them. Um, the house in the background was the mobile home that my grandmother lived in during my lifetime. And she moved in there after her husband died and her youngest daughter uh, moved away. I thought we didn't have any photos of that. I thought it was, you know, it'd been there for, it was there many years, but we just didn't have any pictures of it until I was starting to scrap this layout and I realized that there it was in the background. So when you have these old pictures, sometimes it's good to really look at them and see what else is in there and what they could be used for. Because it's quite obvious this is a story of me and my car, but if I wanted to talk about this particular place, then I do have that. And I could scan it and I could blow it up maybe a little bit, um, but I could still have a little bit of that. So I've done that before with, with looking at the backgrounds of things, and I was really pleased uh, to see that. Anyway, back to the sketch. Uh, the three photos, I'm going to use this Dream a Little, since I'm going to do the title of Dream Car. Uh, this is a Prima wood card, and I also want to do some additional uh, papers and, and things from Webster's Pages, and I have some flair from Maggie Holmes. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and get started. I do have my journaling already typed out, and I can attach some of that with these little paper clips from Tim Holtz. I thought these would be really good to attach the journaling to, and I think I can do that without damaging uh, my Polaroid. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paper clip these little bits of journaling on, and then I'll be doing some product selection. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you a little bit about the um, story here. Of course, it is about my dream car, uh, but the journaling talks about how back in the early 70s, my cousin Roxanne got a powder blue uh, Mustang, and brand new, and I, when I saw her drive into my grandmother's house, or in the photo, I just loved that car. From that moment on, that was the car I wanted. I told my grandmother that was what I was going to have, and she assured me that I would change my mind, but I didn't. That was, I of course ended up with a different color. They didn't make light blue whenever I was getting mine. Uh, I kind of got black by default. I guess Henry Ford's right. You can get any color as long as it's black because I just couldn't find anything else I liked. But anyway, um, I loved that car and drove it for a long time, 13 years and a lot of miles uh, before I had to trade up to a a van, or trade down to a van depending on your perspective, uh, because I'd started a business and I needed more room. 
All right, I've selected some papers here and one little, um, one of those tiny little journaling cards that you get when you cut them out of the six by six pads that make nice embellishments. I'm having a little bit of a challenge though, trying to figure out which papers that I want to use with behind the photos so it won't be too dark and busy and compete with the photos. And I finally landed on some. I've been going through my thickers lately, trying to use up some of these sets that don't have a lot of stuff. So I, I go through and try to find ones like for short words like car. If I can get that out of a set, I'll do that rather than pulling it out of a newer set because I need to make some space in my thickers drawer so I can buy more thickers. All right, so I just had to cut up the H there and turn that into an R. I run out of R's faster than anything. Still a little bit puzzled by the background pages I end up, or papers I end up using the little dots because it's kind of confetti like a birthday or in this case a grade actually it was I said it was my graduation present It was actually my birthday present I think when I uh, turned 21 I was graduating from college it doesn't matter anyway um, getting these pages down I went ahead and put some dark ink some uh, bl basic gray ink from stamping up around the edges of everything And then I got to thinking that it would be nice to have some mist on the background, but I'd like to have some mist that had some sheen to it. So what I'm going to do is a little experiment here. I'm going to mix some of this Merry Merry Mist from Studio Calico, which does not have sheen, with some White Perfect Pearls from Ranger. And that white color is called Perfect Pearl. I'm going to tap that down, put a little bit in a plastic cup, and then I'll add some of the mist. I have, at this point, never done this before. And I picked out some of that paper there left over from the collection that's similar to my background color, so I can kind of see what it will look like on the green. My first effort at it does, doesn't work because it's not liquid enough, so I added some water. And now I'm getting some drops. And it really amazed me. The color is beautiful. It starts to dry very quickly. In fact, it's already, this is speeded up a bit, but it's already drying there on the paper. I do end up heat setting the final version of this uh, to get it good and dry and to keep it from rubbing off. Um, I had try, I'd done an experiment before with um, using ink and Perfect Pearls and water that I got from Tim Holtz, but I had never tried just taking another mist and mixing with Perfect Pearls, and I really like this. So I mixed up a little bit more. I'm going to move my photos out of the way so those don't get splattered. And cover up that journaling at the bottom because I don't want it to have pink droplets all over it either. And then just using the paintbrush to drop it on. And that controls it pretty well and it ended up going diagonally the way I wanted it to. The only thing I wished I'd done is gone ahead and there's going to be a card in the lower right hand corner, that wood card. I wish I'd put the wood card on so it would have had some droplets on top of that. That would have been pretty. But anyway, it's, you'll still see plenty of this shine. So once I finish, I wipe off the paintbrush. Use an old paintbrush for something like this because it does stain it. Heat set it, and then I'll show you a slow version of this, and you'll get to see what the color looks like. I like this so much, I think I'm going to do a separate technique video on this. You see a lot of shine there, but you can certainly see plenty of that pink color that came from the mist. Now it's time to put these Polaroids on. And I'm going to use some dimensional adhesive for these, because I know I can put that on and not tear anything. Um, and I, it ends up giving the, the layout a lot more dimension and really uh, adds to the, to the look, I think, in the end. So I'm writing on here, that's the one I want in, in relation to the story about telling my grandmother that I definitely, that was the car I was going to have when I turned um, 16. I had to wait a few years, didn't end up being 16. And I have to lay, add two layers of dimension to get that to pop up above the Polaroids. So for this card down here at the cor in the corner, I have one of those little bitty journaling cards as I say and I couldn't find my sponge it was right there at me and I just didn't see it so I just rubbed some of the gray ink directly on it to give it a little bit more um, dimension as far as the appearance of it and I'll wrap some twine around it once I get everything glued on 
I love using those little bitty cards out of the 6x6 pads. And it's going to have 85 since that was the year of the car and the year that I received it. And then we'll have a piece of flair from Maggie Holmes. And I'll just wrap some my mind's eye twine around it and tie that in a bow and I'll do that off camera and we'll come back here in just a moment and see the final page. So here's our final page. Let's take a look at the sketch. We have three Polaroids with the paper behind them, the different designer papers, and then some journaling there along the bottom. The little card in the lower right hand corner would be a good place for any kind of a 3 by 4 like Project Life card. I just happen to have the wood card uh, from Prima that I wanted to use. So thank you for watching today. I love to get your comments and feedback and you can check out my blog for uh, different products that I have available and uh, certainly here on YouTube for other videos. Thank you.